Hello, hello, everybody. It is 1.10 p.m. Central Time on the 1st of December, 2020. It's almost the end of the year. 2020 is finally almost over. It's Tuesday here in the United States. I hope you're doing well. We are here to talk about seismic events that are taking place. And man, do we have some seismic events underway right now that are worth mentioning. Over the past two to three days, Two different 50,000-foot-high blasts happening over here in Indonesia. One at Mount Semeru, right where these rings overlap, the pink and the white ring, right there in eastern Java. The other over at Luotolo Volcano, next to East Timor. Both 50,000-foot-high. Volcanic ash warnings put out for 50,000-foot level. You can go see the videos of that, too, now that are all over social media, but that was over the past couple days. We also had a big, deep earthquake here, 6.3 to 6.4. USGS originally had it at a 6.0, or was that the Europeans? One of the two agencies had it at 6, the other had it at 6.3 to 6.4. Deep earthquake here. Now guess what's happened today? A new series of earthquakes has developed at the central Aleutian Island chain going over to the east. 6.3, 6.4, as well as 5.5. They're marked in white. Let me get all the other earthquakes out of there. Here we go. So you can see, or 5.7 now they've upgraded at the tip of the arrow. So first this hit, 6.3 to 6.4. Then this hit. And we'll see we actually have two different earthquakes reported. Hold on. One at 1622. Both of them at 1622. One's from the Europeans. The other's from the USGS. USGS actually has it at 6.4 now. Wow. Nikolsky, Alaska. Now, this is on top of our 50,000-foot eye blast over here, the big deep earthquake here, now a new 6.4 earthquake downstream. And when I say downstream, I mean it. Look which way the arrows point. Well, I mean, you might not even be able to see it. Hold on. The arrows point over to the east from our deep earthquake that happened yesterday here. So when this earthquake struck yesterday, we postulated out loud in my videos about the central Aleutians. Now, I'm going to turn on our ring we have a shell or a uh, bubble, if you will, that goes around the earthquakes. It's a function on Earthquake 3D. And I want you to see where the ring spreads out to. Here, let me get all the other earthquakes out of there. There we are. So where the ring or the bubble on this spreads out to, look, the perimeter of the bubble. Let me get a side view. Do you see how that ring goes right down into the middle of where this new 6.4 struck? This isn't me doing anything with the rings. I always keep them fully turned up all the way. And I turned this function on yesterday, and we saw that the ring came out to the central Aleutians, and that's where I issued the warning. Now, the reason I issued the warning right there is because of the plate boundary, the plate boundary that exists right there. So this bubble of pressure coming up underneath the whole northwest Pacific so far has spread out over to the east, striking with our 6.4 earthquake shallow up at near the surface, closer to the surface, of course. And then downstream from that, a new 5.5 earthquake in the tip of the arrow. Let's get that on the screen now. There it is, 5.7. Energy is flowing out and away from the big, deep earthquake. So this now makes three different 6.3 to 6.4 earthquakes in the last day to go from zero last week up to three in a day. That's an increase plus the two 50,000 foot high blast over here in Indonesia. It's a big increase around the entire Pacific if we take into account what's going on down to the east by southeast. Chile got hit yesterday with our 6.3 and lo and behold, X marks the spot was just struck by a 5. And that's one magnitude less, but the distance across is about the distance is the United States is across. So several thousand miles from the coast of Chile all the way down into the South Sandwich Islands. Let's just go look at it on the USGS plate boundary map. Going from where the 6.3 is up here, down, around, and over. And that's what we told you to watch for yesterday. Now it's happened today. Up to the north, Central America, we have it's like, almost like an arrow pointing to the east. All of these earthquakes coming into a pinnacle tip here at Colombia, Panama. Now look what just happened. A new 3.0 earthquake, pretty small, small earthquake, struck next to Nicaragua. Teleco Volcano, 
back alive, and Nicaragua not normally on the list. Nevado del Ruiz volcano, where the two rings overlap here, that's in Colombia. Sanjay and Reventador both erupting in the past couple days here in Ecuador. Sabancaya erupting here in South Peru. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And then we go up to Fuego and Popocate Patal. And that's six and seven. So now we have seven eruptions in the past few days across Central and South America. And that's an increase in the number of eruptions. And over here in the West Pacific, let's just go check and see. Do we have any other new additions on the list? Volcanically speaking. Like I said, Telica, Telica. In Nicaragua, Luatolo still going up to 10,000 foot. Suenizajima in South Japan, Popocate Patala in Mexico, Sanjay already mentioned in Ecuador, Sabancaya already mentioned in Peru, Semeru we already talked about, and it's still going up to 20,000 feet after yesterday's 50,000 foot. Telica again, Ducono, Fuego already mentioned that. That's in Guatemala. Semeru mentioned that again, multiple volcanic ash emissions. Okay, I'm just looking for any new additions. We have to check now with the amount that's going on. First of all, Luatolo had not been on the list in the entire time I've been streaming. And the last eruption was 2012. So Luatolo with the 50,000 foot. That's somewhat rare. Okay, anything else going on? Well, okay, now, before we get into Europe or anywhere else. New Zealand. Guys, look at that. You guys got a small earthquake there, okay? It's just a small event. The 4.6 previously this week up here to the north, on the North Island. Now right down here in South New Zealand, see where the arrow is. The reason we have the arrow even there, let's go back to the USGS plate boundary map. Down in New Zealand, look where the plate boundary goes. Goes across Kaikoura, goes right across the central portion of the island, and then goes down to the south, or the country, sorry goes down to the south, and that's right where the earthquake is. It's the plate boundary. The plate boundary is slightly, slightly moving. 3.6 up to the north, it bends across and goes back up to the east side of the North Island. And that is the previous earthquake right on the side of it. So, New Zealand's moving, but why? Well, we have deep earthquakes up to the north. Deep earthquakes usually result in New Zealand starting to show seismic activity. That's significant. Fours and fives after we get deep earthquakes up in the Kermadec Islands. Now look where the rings overlap on these. We have two overlap points. First of all, let's get a straight overhead view on this. Mm, right about there, okay. So our first set of rings overlap on North New Zealand, right here on top of Volcano, right in the center of the North Island. The second set of rings overlaps down here, just south of Christ Church, or is it right at Christ Church? No, it's south of Christ Church. So two spots that I'm going to watch now in New Zealand where both sets of rings overlap. One to the north, North Island, Topo, one to the south in between our two current sets. How big? Something bigger than the 4.6. And I think it'll stay in that 4 to 5 range. I, I don't think it'll go above that. Knock on wood, right? Hope I got that right. What else happened? Ah, the central point here on the coast of Japan got hit. Central point between what? Between our previous sets of earthquakes. Look at this. 4.0 to the south, marked in red, and the 5 up to the north, marked in a reddish color as well, and the whitish colored earthquake right along the plate boundary, the coast of Japan. Let me show it to you again. USGS plate boundary map, right here. It's actually still on there. That's the orange earthquake right here. So between the two, though, is the middle point. That middle point is what we call a fulcrum point. The fulcrum point's been struck. Same with up in Alaska, the previous middle point, if you will, between our current sets of earthquakes. You see the white earthquake, the big one, in the middle, in between our pinkish-colored earthquakes on both sides. This was somewhat open yesterday compared to where we are now. And now it's a 6.3 to 6.4 earthquake popping off right in the middle, a bigger earthquake popping off in the middle. Now, remember what I told you in yesterday's broadcast about the shell or the ring on this big 6.4 deep earthquake. One of the ring edges going over here to the middle of the Aleutians, prompting me to issue the warning for a large earthquake to strike in the Aleutians in the next few days. And it just hit. Now, the ring also reaches over into Siberia, Russia, Mongolia, and central China. It was right down here into central China. You see where the rings go. It also goes back down to Philippines, back across Guam and the Izu Ridge. And I told you all those areas are going to get hit. 
It's a bubble of pressure coming up underneath the whole plate boundary. One more time, let me explain it. Bubble of pressure coming up underneath here. The red lines are cracks in the plate. Plates where they meet up. And the surface crack goes all the way down to the bottom of the plate where the magma is. So it's a crack that really goes all the way down and allows for heat and transfer to happen between the plate. Now, when a bubble of pressure comes up on the underside of it, you can imagine what happens when you lift up on the underside of something that's already broken. The stress or the power or the force that you put into the object seeks out those break points, like perforations. And that's what's happened all the way over here to the east. But the distance is so far from here over to here. Again, that's like the distance the U.S. is across. At, I mean, you, it's just a huge area that's been displaced on this big deep earthquake from two days ago that's raised high off the globe here. But it also goes all the way down here into the Philippines. Like I said, it goes down north of Guam. Here's the tiny island of Guam. And the ring reaches down just to its north. So I would expect the area north of Guam. I would expect the area right here in North Philippines going up towards Japan. I would expect the area in China. And I would expect the area in Siberia to all light up with significant earthquake activity in the next few days could go as big as what's going on over here in Alaska, which is going into the mid-range 6 level, and that should not be ignored, especially for like China or Russia. But China, especially since there's so many people right through central China, the ring comes down, by the way, the ring comes down into China right where the green meets the brown, and we all know what's there. That's just crazy that it does, right? Just bad luck. And you'll notice also there's no earthquake activity right now reported across all of China and all of Russia. We have to go into Tajikistan and what is that? Kazakhstan? Tajikistan and Kazakhstan and Afghanistan to get any other earthquake activity reported. So two continents or a whole continent quiet and that might be due to not reporting of the earthquakes but it could be seismically quiet which means there's building force or tension in the area. And we know there is because a big bubble of pressure just came up below the whole West Pacific, which is going to transfer into Asia. Hence my warning for China next. And Russia. Okay, over to the West. Iran, quiet. Plate boundary has gone quiet as energy transferred from there over into Europe and the Mediterranean. 4.4 are striking just east of Lebanon. But I'd like to draw your attention to what's going on in France and Germany. Again, hit a new earthquake, but this one right at the German-Swiss border, on top of the rare 4.0 earthquake to strike in South Germany. Now a 3.2 is struck in central France at the Chain de Pouilles. Pouilles. The Chain de Pouilles. It's a volcanic chain over here. <laughs> I'm butchering the way that's pronounced. Please, it's French. Cut me some slack. So here we are. Let's zoom in and show you where the Chain de Pouilles is these are all volcanoes here in France look at them they're covered in trees but you should be able to make out the conical shape of the spatter cones that are covered in trees here 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 I mean it just goes on and on it's a whole chain of volcanoes in France and here's the Smithsonian on it chain of Pouilles prominent in the history of volcanology form a north-south trending chain of basaltic and trachytic centered Cones, basaltic Mars and Trachytic Lava Domes. All the way up. And again, they're, the craters are pronounced on them, but they're covered in trees. They're doing a little farming on the side. A little nitrogen-rich soil there for certain. And that's where the earthquake is. Please. So over to the east by northeast, there's no volcanic field marked in southwest Germany. The Eiffel Field, the East Eiffel and West Eiffel volcanic fields are up to the north. How about a 3.7 striking in Algeria? And a 3.6 to 3.7 striking back out at Iceland. Both are on the arrows. One is on an arrow going to the west, out towards the Azores. The other is on an arrow going to the north, of course, out to Iceland in the North Arctic. Africa is still waiting to get hit, but man, all that news coming out of that liquefaction... That's up here in Tanzania. So up here, I don't know what to make of that. That just made it in the news, the liquefaction and the people getting sucked into the ground. And Anyway, 
Uh, let's go over here to the United States now. So, oh, first of all, let's recap. Big deep earthquake prompting me to issue the warning for the central Aleutians yesterday. And now the same size earthquake, 6.4, struck in the middle of our area that was warned. Additionally, a 5.7 creeping out over to the east, heading over to the United States. And now, apparently, the United States has just been struck up here in southeast Montana. What? Hold on. Did that just hit? Let's see. When did this strike? 1847 UTC. In the last hour, a new 3.4 earthquake has struck in southeast Montana. Very rare. Also, Illinois was struck earlier today at the Illinois-Indiana border region on the edge of the Craton to the south. So which should we look up first? You know what? Let's start with the small earthquake in Illinois since I'm right here. You see where the rings overlap? This cannot be a coincidence. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you that my house is quite literally right in the middle of where the rings overlap. Here, let me prove that to you. Hold on. Just remember that this little bulge in the state line of Missouri right here. Just remember that and that the arrow goes right through the south tip of it down through downtown St. Louis. Let me show you where I live in relation to that, how it's weird that the rings overlap on my house. <laughs> oh my God. What the heck? I'm not doing anything with the ring place marks either, guys. That's just the way it... Whoa, we just went total sideways there. There, we're due north. Let's turn on our borders and labels. This is crazy. I can't believe this. This is real time, guys, but we got to do it. Here's St. Louis. There's the bulge in the state line over to the east. And... I've already been doxxed, so everybody already knows where I live. There we are. So we are right there. Yes, I live in Sherwood Forest. We're right there. Right here. Okay? Why does that matter? I'm right here. That's where I'm at. Okay, now that we've done that, let's go pull the coordinates on this and go see what's at Parkersburg, Illinois. Over there in Illinois, guys, my good old Illinoisan viewers, the Illini, the Illini, the Illini naughty. <laughs> ah, that, okay, <clears throat> okay, uh, let's carry on. Uh, do we have anything here nearby? Well, in Calhoun County, I do think that there's something just to the south that I think everybody here would be interested in. Let's zoom in and see what we have. Looky here. We've got ourselves an oil and gas well. And I don't know if we're going to have a street level on this. Let's go see. Right up the road we do. We have a street level looking down the road. I wonder if we'll be able to see the tanks off in the distance or something. Not with that grainy imagery. My God. Okay. That's like they had an old one megapixel digital camera on there. But you saw it from satellite view. Let's go look at another one. Another set of frack wells here. Just to show you what they look like. I don't have them all marked. I, it takes forever to even find them out here. There we go. More tanks, pumps, jacks. Here's the jack out in the middle of the field. Creating the pressure. Here's our tanks and our pumps and our pipeline. I wonder if we have a street level on this. Nope. Rural area out here in Illinois. And it goes on, it just keeps going. And there's another round of frack wells up here. And they are doing, that's what this is. This is fracking. So they'll do wastewater disposal, disposal, injection, which breaks apart the shale. Man, they don't have any street levels around here. Eh, that's okay. So the earthquake, it's just to the north. Parkersburg, Olney, Illinois. I don't know if there's any here nearby. I'll have to go in and do some inspection in the woods and in the fields. I mean, the way you do this, the way you find it, you can either try and get a state. Here's a water tower, for instance. Don't, don't mistake a water tower for frack well of some kind. But you can either get a state list of wells, but I don't know if that's going to be complete. We got a microwave tower here. Man, I could spend all day doing this. This is, this is really what I love doing. I love looking up the earthquakes to see if there's anything nearby. And a lot of times we find stuff. Now, these are all farm fields. Didn't we have some hot spots here about a week or two ago? I think we did. Oh, hey, hey. 
There we go. There we go. Fracking. I say, old boy. We've got another fracking operation right there. Do we have anything up here to the north? I mean, this is the county line, and they can drill out by it. You know. Oh, yeah. There's another one. We got a pipeline connected. This is not farmers with their... It's not like a grain silo or anything. I don't want anybody to get confused. Let's see if we can find a grain silo. This is not a grain silo either. Again, the pipeline and the connecting points. This is fracking. We got a... Oh, look. We got the shadow of the jack of the pump out, out in the field. There it is. You can see that? Do you see the black shadow of the jack? Yeah, definitely. We've got oil here. Oil and gas. Fracking. Do we have any kind of street level on there? No. No street level. Let's mark it. Let's mark where the well is, where the jack is. Fracking. How many more are there? There's another set here. Okay, hey, a perfect example right there. There's another set right there. That's not farming. You can go find farm silos for grain. Let's go up here to the north, see how many more there are. Yeah, here's another set. Ooh, this one, you can really see the shadow on it. So that is, that's oil or gas. It's all throughout the field here. There's the burn flare-off apparatus next to it, in case there's any kind of emergency. It just keeps going. Look at these. There's another one. And they keep going to the north. There's another one. Let me make sure you guys can see all this. Good. There's the tanks, the pumps, jacks, burn, flare-off, pipeline apparatus. We are right next to it, guys. Maybe just a, like a mile. Here's another one. The shadow of the jack of the pump. Let's mark this one, too, since we're getting closer and closer. This is Illinois now. This is on the north side of the New Madrid Seismic Zone. And I have to do this. We have to pay attention to this. I mean, if you ignore this, what scientist ignores something like this? Here, look, there's another set of wells right there. What science-minded person even ignores this? You know what I mean? You don't have to be the practicing scientist getting paid to do it. But, come on, Illinois never gets hit. And look, the earthquake is coming in right next to our fracking ops. So, 2.2 fracking ops. Now, the rest of these earthquakes over to the west, every single one of them, bar none, going across all of Oklahoma and Texas, all of these are at drill points, every one of them. Now, I would like to point out we have a 2.9 down in southwest Texas, but the spot where this is happening, we had just something, the weirdest thing in the world happened yesterday. Let, first, let me show you the earthquake. This is a 3.0, and this is on the edge of the Craton down in Texas. Look at Texas on the Craton map. Now, this is technically on the Mexico side of the border, right? I mean, here's the border. So, I mean, it's just a few miles over on the Mexican side of the border. But El Indio, California, or California, El Indio here in Texas, over on the east side, we have all of these weird roads. And I was looking at this last night. The reason I was looking at this last night, well, first of all, there was no earthquake here last night. A bunch of oil wells here. And I was looking at the radar. The reason I was looking at the radar is because down here in South Texas, we had a detection of heat signatures numbering in the tens of, well, maybe not tens of thousands, thousands of heat signature detections here across the border. And when you clicked on them, they gave you a temperature of 64,000 Kelvin, 115,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Here, here, it's still showing. 64,537 Kelvin and fire size, 64,537 meters squared. They're matching. There's something weird going on. Again, this is on December 1st. This is happening right now. 64,000. This one has a temperature of 536K. So you can't tell me that it's an error with the sensor when the sensor is properly detecting 536K right there. And then right next to it, over here at the border, we've got 64,000 Kelvin, which is 115,000 degrees. And the radar here going into pulse mode and pulsing on the mountains, going over here to Coahuila, where the hot spot is, where this also has 64,537 Kelvin temperature reading. The mountains are getting bombarded by the radar, and I showed it in last night's update.
But I'll show it again now just so everybody can see it because now we have an earthquake right next to it. What can we say? There's an earthquake right next to the hotspot, 64,000 degree hotspots that we thought was an anomaly of some kind last night. You know, even I'm willing to say, man, that looks like it could be an anomaly. Here's the radar station. Look where the radar station is. It's right at the border in South Texas. Now watch. Let's go back to last night. Let's open up 200 images. Or it, that won't be last night. Let's see if it shows it. Yeah, no, it still shows it. Watch this. So you're going to see these puffs start coming off from the oil wells. The oil wells flaring off. They're like puffing off from the ground. Then the radar goes into pulse mode. And look, they hit the mountains over to the west. They bring the radar tilted down and it's reflecting off the mountaintops over in Mexico. Then you see it starts hitting off the solar farm, or not the solar farm, the wind farms up off the north side of town. 64,000 degree temperature detected as the radar is going into pulse mode and the computer doesn't know what to read off that. It thinks it's superheated. It's hotter than the surface of the sun. Some kind of weird reading. And the area affected the same size? That's just a glitch. The Man, the, the radar is, it's, something's going on, an interaction between the radar and the satellite, which is very odd. But then to get an earthquake right next to it is just, and there's oil wells there to top it off. So we got the radar, we got the wind farm, we got the oil wells, we've got the mountains over to the west with a hot spot, and the radar is going to that spot and hitting off the mountaintop because they tilted it down. Now let's go up into the northwest now that we've solved that little mystery, at least where it's happening. We don't, again, I, I don't know what could be causing that other than the radar itself. But let's go into, wait, look at this. This is the weirdest thing. 3.4, where? Eh, eastern Montana. That's not me half-assing it on the coordinates. That's from the USGS. Anytime I see something like that, I gotta go look it up. Not giving you a town to triangulate from? Let me get a sip of my coffee. So what do we have here? What's that? Wait. That's a pipeline. Hold on. Is that a pipe? That's a pipeline. Is there anything else here nearby? Hold on. Okay, we're in Montana. We're never over here in Montana normally. So for us to be over here in Montana, wait, wait, we got a hotspot from when? Last night. Yesterday. A hotspot. One county apart. How many hotspots were in Montana? Just a handful. All the oil wells. Look at all those. But look, we're one county away from a hotspot from yesterday. And it's not like we're getting a lot of hotspots up in Montana. So all of a sudden, a hotspot, Montana. What's this? What are these? Coal strip. Some kind of huge mining operation here. Coal. That's coal. Or is that? I mean, it looks like coal. It's black. Could be igneous rock of some kind. It's got a lava rock or basalt. Okay, so we have a pipeline that's going through the area. What else is nearby? Why did the USGS just list this as Eastern Montana? Well, because of the pipeline, I guess. They don't want people to look it up. Something else right there. Oh, hey! Of course there's a pipeline. One of the only pumping oper... Montana doesn't have that many pumping operations, guys. Hardly any. Dang. That's oil. That's oil. Oil. Black gold. Texas tea. Wow, man, I had to do a little scouring to find that. Jeez. Talk about... Okay, no wonder there's a little pipeline there. And again, like I said, there's not that many oil... <laughs> Dude, there really are not that many oil pumping operations in Montana. More like coal and gas. Of course there's going to be some coal and uh, gas with that. One county over. And then the hot spot over next to the coal mine. Wow. Wow. Let's mark the 3.3 earthquake just so that we can mark that. Hold on. Got 
got to remember this one in the future. We'll be back here at some point in the future, now that we know there's an oil pumping operation here and you see more earthquakes here. December 1st, 2020. Amazing. Okay. That's why we do what we do, guys. This is why I still grow online. I find stuff that other people just don't take the time to look up. And it matters to have one of the only oil wells nearby, and that's where the earthquake struck. And it's an older well. You can see that's not exactly a brand new well. Okay, over to the west. We're back into Idaho and southwest Montana, but mainly on the edge of the Craton. Deformed edge of the Craton. Above the magma chamber for Yellowstone. But what you should notice, at least what I see here, all the earthquakes over the past several days. Let's turn on the last day. Now we're just going to look at the last 24 hours worth of earthquakes. It's going to take a few of them off the screen, but it's going to show us the most current areas moving. So look at this little trickling line of zeros going down into Yellowstone Park, right? The Lake Yellowstone itself. Well, that matches perfectly with the actual edge of the Craton, the brown versus the purple. Goes right through the park. It's no coincidence that the edge of the Craton has a supervolcano on it. Now, over on the western side of that edge, central Idaho, we're actually above the deepest part of the center of the magma chamber for Yellowstone that goes down at an angle, 11 grand canyons in size, and comes up to the surface at Wyoming. So let's just recap. Out in front or to the east of Yellowstone at a drill point in Montana, a rare 3.4, 3.3 earthquake. A little trickling line of quakes going along the Craytown Edge in the park itself, Yellowstone Park. And then the predominance happening above the magma chamber for Yellowstone, all in the two range. Now, wait a second. Back up to the north, we have a quarry blast up here north of the border. Let's just make sure about that. Yeah, an explosion, if you will. Explosion up here to the north. But what else do we have? Let's go look up the other earthquakes. 2.3. Oso, Washington. Let's see if we have any marked faults from the USGS. We do. We have one marked fault going out into the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Let's go see what the name of that fault is. Let's go find the name of it. Coming out of the area south of Mount Vernon, Washington. Right in here. This thing. What is this? Oh, wow. Is it called that all the way over? It is. Dang. Dude. I shouldn't have said anything earlier. Ah, man. Here, let me turn off my phone and my phone's about to start ringing. Of course my phone will start ringing. Devil's Mountain Fault. <laughs> the whole thing going out into the Strait of Juan de Fuca is called Devil's Mountain. Oh, man. Okay, let's carry on. So that's where the 2.3 is on Devil's Mountain. Is there anything else there next to Devil's Mountain? I guess the only way to find out is going to be to go look up the coordinates. Uh, where does Devil's Mountain go to? The fault goes back up to a mountain. Hold on. Hold on. It goes back right up to something. Devil's Mountain Fault goes back up to this. Well, here. Just look. There's the earthquake epicenter. And it goes right back to three fingers south and then ultimately to Glacier Peak, but, I mean, we're right on the foot of three fingers south, old stratovolcanoes. And the ice caves, too, just to the south of Vesper Peak, but the fault goes right next to it. Here, let's compare. One more time, the fault. There we go. Fault goes back over to the east by southeast from the earthquake. And east by southeast from the earthquake, three fingers south, right to the volcano. What's this right in the middle? What the heck? What is this? What the heck is that? Look at these towers. Do you see that? These are like mega towers, and they're bringing power right down to this thing. What is that? And look, it's got this circle around it. Whoa. Hold on. Look at, the, look at the towers around the tower. Hold on, man. What, are, what, what is this? The heck is this place? You see this? Look at the towers down at the, in the valley, the towers up at the top. What, what the? 
A circle around it? Why do I have to find this crap, man? Why do I have to find this, man? Here, hold on. Let's go see if there's a Google Earth community on this or anything. Like, not a word on it? Please. Let's turn on places. What is this? Oh, my God. For crying out loud, man. Okay. I'm out of here. I'm just going to leave the microphone on. We'll leave a hot mic on. We're done. All right, I'm not done. I'm going to come back in. Never mind. I changed my mind. It's the way that we do it online. You rage quit and come back. Okay, that was a joke. I'm not rage quitting. But seriously now, Jim Creek Naval Radio Station. Dude, this is VLF. Here, I... It, oh. Oh, man. Dude, I just stepped. This is like a bull in a china shop. I just stepped in the deepest shit ever. Jim Creek Naval Radio. Hey, that should do it right there. Oh, it is. Oh, shit. This is the wiki on it. Jim Creek Naval Radio Station is a United States Navy very low frequency transmitter facility at Jim Creek, New Oso, Washington. The primary mission of the site is to communicate orders one way to submarines of the Pacific Fleet. Oh, for crying out loud, man. Look, they've even got a diagram of what it is across the valley. Those are all connected across the valley. Oh, look, they've got a counterweight transmitter building. There it is. There's the transmitter building right in the middle of it all. These are the, ra these are the wires going across the valley that apparently you can't see. Because of just resolution on this. Let's go see if we can see the wires going across. The That's what these are. This is a tower here and a tower here. And the wires going across in a big stretch in a VLF array. That's what it is. You just can't really see the wire. Oh, you can see the wire. There it is. We're looking really close. You can see the wire as it drops off right there. And we can follow it down. At oh, my God. All right. Damn, man. I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to find this crap. I really am not. I have no inkling to come in on the military and identify anything or... Well, I found a problem, which they probably already know about. The problem. Radio waves cause earthquakes. Certain radio waves. <sighs> Dang. All right, let's go search up some more. Let's go down to the south. Why me, man? Dude, why me? I'm the only one who'll do it. That's what it is. Everybody's too scared. <laughs> you guys all see what happened to me, you know what I mean? Like, you see what they do to me, you're like, oh, screw that, I'm not gonna... Hey, look where we are, right next to a hydroelectric power generation station. Back to a dam. Look at this. And we've got big power lines coming off of this as well. Basically, VLF, you know, 60 hertz is very low, or ultra low frequency. 60 hertz power. Electrical. VLF. Same thing. Long wires. Dude. Well, you know, you can make... I'll accept the Nobel Peace Prize, but under a few conditions, all right? The conditions are, I get to wear a suit of armor when I accept... And I'm talking Middle Ages suit of armor, and I want a squire to come in and announce my presence before I come in and take it. Then, the second condition on accepting the Nobel Prize will be, afterwards, we have a party... And we have a giant cake that's shaped like a giant stick of dynamite. Big red cake, cylindrical. In honor of Nobel. Okay, wait. Speaking of in honor of Nobel, how about we talk about an explosion? Let's go look up this explosion site. How ironic. The irony does not escape me on that. The synchronicity is amazing. Let's go see. Long view. Wait a, wait a, wait a minute. What do we have here? We have an explosion right next to these huge power lines. These are the big kind guides. Maybe it was an electrical explosion of some kind. Some kind of electrical discharge up out of the crust or down into the crust. Maybe that's what it was. We got some houses here, but these are like mansions. Yeah, no, the, the high voltage power lines are the thing I'm concerned about. Now, the explosion could be coming from the quarry right next to it, right? That's a... <laughs> Maybe. Only the shadow knows. How about no earthquakes down in Oregon? We can just skip over the whole state. No biggie. No earthquakes. But wait. Devil's Mountain Fault getting hit. 
going back to the VLF station. Up here to the north, we have an explosion at a quarry. Down here to the south, we have an explosion at a power line. Here in the middle, we have a power line earthquake. VLF power lines explosions. Isn't there something else going on in Washington, Oregon, Northern California, Vancouver Island? I think there is. There was something going on over the past couple months. An ETS, an episodic tremor slip, where the plate starts slipping. They call it a slow slip for a slang term. Now, you'll see here we have a bunch of red dots on the screen. 66 of them right now. Let's go back to yesterday. The 29th. Hold on. 28th. Wait a second. 27th. Search. Houston. Houston. Look at this. Hitting back and search, and it's keeping it at 66. 66. 66. 66. Every day. What? No. 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 Okay, so we got Devil's Peak. We got the 66. Who Who's into this weird... Who's into this... We got the Twilight Zone music. Somebody got the X-Files music. Hold on. Hold on. I think we can just go pull that up right now. Why do, the, why do the rest of the update like that without the expo? Ah, oh, never mind. I'll get a copyright strike. Let's carry on then. This update is turning into a magnum opus. Let's carry on down through Oregon, where we don't have any tremors to report on because the tremor map is stuck at 66. <laughs> oh, dude. It's like fingerprints of the devil. You know what I mean? Like, they are... Oh, man, they got caught their hand in the cookie jar. What's that smell? I smell something. It smells like sulfur in here. All right, we're... <laughs> Let's go down to the south, shall we? We're getting into Northern California. You're about to enter a dimension of sound. Okay. Wait, we have a 3.3 in Northern California. That's the same sized earthquake that struck up here. Isn't it? Yesterday, I mean. So a new 3.3 struck down to the south, right next to Eureka, California, south of Eureka, or north of Geysers. So it's a significant-sized quake in comparison to the rest, all zeros, ones, and twos, the 3.3. So that's close. That's pretty close to the volcano. Let's go pull the coordinates here. Geysers, California, at Clear Lake. This is right next to it on the San Andreas Fault. Let me show you the San Andreas Fault and... You'll understand what's moving. See the thick red line? See the thin red lines? The thin red lines go the same direction as the thick red line, and they all go back up here and meet up with the area that's shifting. 66. Execute order 66. Do it. <laughs> oh, man, dude. We could just crack so many 66 jokes, man. All right, so we're at a volcano called Clear Lake Volcano where they've drilled into this place. Let me show it to you. To get steam to turn the turbines. The turbines are on the side of the volcanic field, and the turbines provide electrical power. High voltage electrical power coming out of the area where we're swarming with earthquakes, and they drilled into the side of the volcano. It's a double weak point, and that electrical discharge is coming up out of the plate. We're going down into it. I don't know which. It's causing earthquakes either way. Now, going down to the south, we're at Monterey Bay. We get onto the creeping section of the San Andreas. Monterey Bay to the creeping section. Let's go pull the coordinates. Moss Landing, California. 8.8 .8 kilometer depth. Inquiring minds want to know what's at the location. Ed. So do I. So let's go find out. Out here in the ocean. Moss Landing. What's at Moss Landing? Oh, I don't know. The biggest electrical generating station here in Northern California that provides a lot of the power to the whole region. Ah, uh, nothing major. Just the power station. Man, nothing to worry about. <laughs> nothing to see here. Hmm. Then we go over onto the creeping section of the San Andreas. Tres Pinos, California. Does that mean three pines? Ah, uh, even this gringo will get that. Let's go put it in and go see. 
I'm doing my best, guys. Sometimes that's not good enough. Other times it's more than sufficient. But at this point, look where we are. We're on the creeping section of the San Andreas. We're next to an unnamed mine to the north. <laughs> do we have anything else here that I need to know about? Do we, do we have any large power generation stations here that I'm just not aware of? How about a pumping operation of some kind? How about that? What is this? These are all kinds of tanks of some kind for something. But what is it? Winery? That's for wine? They're storing wine at this? That's that's wine for... Are they injecting wine into the ground? What about this? Equine Center? That's a winery, really? Dang, that's a lot of wine. Okay, we're on the creeping section of the San Andreas. So we go from the power station over to the creeping section. It's pretty basic. There's nothing there, except for a winery. Hey! Now, everybody, will you please put on the brakes? In my update yesterday, we talked about 2.0 range activity going over, jumping over into the valley. And I told you that there would be similar sized activity breaking off down at the southeast tip of the valley, down here, next to the Garlock Fault. And now, today, a new 2.5 has just struck down there, right at the spot. Arvin, California. Now, there's a reason it struck down at the south tip of the valley. And there's a reason I issue the warning for that, even if it's small. Energy transfers across the valley. Jumps off the San Andreas, goes down to the south tip of the valley. Look what's here. Bum, 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 bum. High voltage power lines. And right on the side of the high voltage power lines, we've got a bunch of oil and gas pumping operations again. And these are definitive oil, mainly oil. And the oil pumping operations go up to the north. They go through the fields just north of Arvin. They begin in earnest here in the fields. These go through the farm fields. So they're not doing this for the crops here. They're not doing that to get water. And it picks up and really picks up to the hundreds of wells across the farmer's fields here. And again, they're not. that's not for... That's not for wine. <laughs> That's why, again, I'm surprised that that was a winery. I, I don't know if that is a winery. But going back up here, you see how many there are. They just go out into the desert, and then we get into the tens of the thousands. We go from a few hundred to this. Tens of thousands. Goes on for miles, and it's nothing but oil and gas drill points across this whole thing. This is Bakersfield, California, in the valley. So like I said... Earthquakes come down the San Andreas, jump over into the valley, and then go down at an angle, and dead end down here at the Garlock Fault. And as that happens, we'll see a number of earthquakes increase over on the Garlock Fault as energy is shifted down through the valley, down to it. Let me show it to you so you can understand how it shifted down there. It's pretty easy to understand when we look at it this way. Coming down the thick red line out of the Juan de Fuca, we jump over into the valley where the drill points start with the oil and gas up here. Jump down to the south tip of the valley, and that's where the Garlock is. Going east to west. That's this down here, the Garlock Fault. So it's like the wall that catches the energy. It doesn't stop there, though. It carries on. It tries to carry on and maintain momentum down to Southern California. Notice the lines of earthquakes are all making a diagonal trajectory from northwest to southeast. All of them. Even the microcosm of them, very down close to the surface. And then across Nevada, for instance, again, a diagonal line. This isn't me spacing these out or anything. This is 24 hours worth of earthquakes reported from the USGS. So wait a second. We're down here next to power lines and drill points. We're back up here, and we're at a power generating plant right along the coast. We go over to the creeping section of the San Andreas, where there is nothing there except for a winery. We go back up to the electrical generation stations here at Geysers. We go back up to the biggest earthquake of the day, right next to the place that's shifting, which is the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone. We go up further to north, and we skip over all of Oregon with no earthquakes reporting. And the tremor map is jacked. Then we get up here to the north, and we have explosions, power lines, Devil's Fault, and a VLF array. U.S. Navy. Oh, God. You know how many U.S. Navy people are going to be watching now? Tip top, tippy top, we're in good shape here, folks. Let me go ring the bell. Hold on. 
All aboard! It's an actual nautical bell, guys. All right. So, let's go over here to the California-Nevada border and then make this line of quakes go see where they are. I mean, it's pretty specific. It goes right down across, going down towards L.A. Or L.A. Las Vegas. So, where are these? These small earthquakes are at Mammoth Lakes. It's another volcano. But there's something inside of where the earthquake perimeter is. Go out a few miles around it. But right inside of, right next to where the earthquake is, let me show you what's here. First of all, here's the caldera for the super volcano, Long Valley Caldera. But right next to it, here, geothermal drilled into it to get steam to turn the turbines to provide major electrical power for the area. So are you seeing it? something in common? These are electrical generating stations, guys. It's not like it's just an VLF array. <laughs> Oh, the U.S. Navy. Again, man. Dude, I'm freaking. Let's go over here across the border. Over to Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Buttes. Let's just pull an earthquake from right in the middle of all of it. Mina, Mina, Nevada. Of all the things. VLF. Very low frequency. Man, that I've been dancing around this for 10 years. With harp. Microwaves, VLF, plasmas. Here's the earthquake epicenter right in the middle, and we have a line of quakes on both sides going west to east through the Monte Cristo Hills Volcanic Center. Again, take a look at where the earthquakes are, and look where they head to. They're going to our arrow. That's like an extension of the back of our arrow. Now, this goes back to another noteworthy sized earthquake, 3.0, and 3.0 struck between the supervolcano and Monte Cristo Hills, Bodie, California. Now, Bodie is a name that many of my viewers might remember from a while ago, maybe like a year or two ago. We were over here almost every day. Let me show you. Here's Mono Lake Volcanic Field. It resides between the supervolcano and Monte Cristo Hills over here. But on the north side of here is Aurora Bodie Crater. And we haven't shown it in a year. It used to get hit almost every day. It's a weak point in the crust. Look at this old butte and spatter cone and lava flow off of that. It's amazing looking. And that's like two or 300 feet off the desert floor. That's a 300 foot high, 200 foot high lava flow that spreads out and goes out into the desert. A very viscous, thick lava came out of there. But this is really, these are small, on the side of Mono Lake, which itself is on the side of the supervolcano. And then next to it here, this ring of bulging points, each one of them is oval shape, bulging, and some of them have ruptured in the past and spilled magmatic contents up to the surface, lava coming out in a fissure, like this, for instance. But these are bulging lacoliths, each oval shape here, a different point that's bulged and protruded out to the surface, and some of them have erupted, like this Churchill Butte right there. But this ring is the same size as the supervolcano which itself is the same size as Mono Lake. It's just these have bulged and not erupted. Monte Cristo Hills broke in half six months ago with a 6.5 earthquake and carries on to this day. Now, spreading from there in a diagonal line down across Nevada, we're going to go and take a look. Let's just start up here where the 0 0.9 is and pull the coordinates. Goldfield, Nevada. Oh, man. This is just going to be an exciting little trip down through Nevada. Goldfield. Look where we are. So first of all, Goldfield, there is a, a large mine up here. But this is not an explosion, is it? No, it's not. 6.1 kilometer depth. They're not down at 6 km. We're on the south side of the volcanoes here. So right down on the south side of all the volcanoes. These are lava flows. Ancient. And there's the mine. A lot of gold out there. There is. There really is gold mining going on. And what are these? What is this? Hmm. Now, when I see something like that, I tend to think that it's some kind of pipeline or power line. You don't just do it. I mean, you got the highway right here. Why would you go? Why wouldn't you just use the highway? I'd be willing to bet that's a pipeline goes through the desert. 
We don't have any power lines there. It's well maintained. We could probably keep going down and find the substation. All right, enough of that. I'm trying to find, again, the actual cause of the earthquake. And when I look in and I see a pipeline there, pipeline goes back up here. Likely there's some drill points through here. Maybe mining. We know mining at the surface, but I'm talking deep shaft mining. We have volcanoes right there, and it's the only three within a good 50-mile area. Now, wait. That line of earthquakes, is that mimicking this line of whatever this is? Wait a second. What are we at? Oh, man. Another one of these? Is this something that I shouldn't be zooming in on? Some kind of U.S. naval phased array radar or some kind out in the desert? Oh, I hope not. I sure hope not. I don't want to keep doing that. Let's go carry on. Let's go from that 0 0.9 down to the 0 0.5. Notice they're all going in the same direction as that road. Oh, no. This is down at 0 0.8 kilometer depth. So all these are down below the surface. Okay, we're on the edge of Thirsty Butte Volcano. An unnamed volcanic butte. Uh, look at... Yeah, that's unnamed? Who wants to go plant their flag on it? Name it, man. Thirsty Butte, okay. Anything else here? Okay, we have a paved road going through the desert. That's odd. What are the... Oh, oh, wait. <laughs> no, of course. We're on the edge of the nuclear test sites now. So these are all underground nuclear test sites. Many of them, we actually let the Europeans come in and do some of these tests. Let's just get some info on one of these. U.S. nuke Operation Darwin. Natural selection, of course. <laughs> June 25th, 1986. 20 to 150 kilotons. Right next to it, U.S. nuke Operation Hornitos. October 31st, 1989. 150 kilotons. And this is the underground nuclear test site over here in the valley, but it extends all the way over here, right next to where the earthquake is. Isn't that wonderful? Let's carry on. Boy, dude, I really am stepping into it. Nuke test sites getting hit. The younger ones. The, the ones from the late 80s. Dome Mountain Volcanic Butte. What do we have here right next to Dome? Oh, wait, what's this? U.S. Nuke Operation Buggy E Double S. One kiloton, 1968, March 12th. Small one. Right at it. No doubt about it. Dang. Let's carry on. Let's get out of here, man. We gotta get out of here. Somebody get me out of here. Hell. All right, let's go. Let's roll. Uh oh. Dang, we're at Skull Mountains. We're, all we're doing is going down here to the south side of Doomtown. Here's Doomtown. Operation Rise Line, the surface nuclear test site, where they blasted away the town. And these are all the tests in the valley here. U.S. Nuke Operation Austin, June 21st, 1990, 0 to 20 kilotons. Anyway, we're right down on the south side of Doomtown Operation Rise Line. That's where this 0 0.3 is. Let's carry on, shall we? Indian Springs. Now, this is up at the surface. This is a... Oh, no. Oh, for crying out loud, guys. 36737 North, 115.666 West. Dude, somebody's messing around. Somebody at the USGS is messing around. I'm not joking. Somebody at the USGS is messing around. There's no way... That we could have a 66 on the tremor map and a 666 on the coordinates and devil's fault all in the same broadcast. And me calling out the Satan worshippers earlier today when I got attacked for sharing a charity. You guys know I got attacked for sharing a charity. I shared a charity today on Giving Tuesday. I was attacked by a group of people online. Came after my post and said, don't donate to charity, bop, 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 and they came after me. I said, you guys are a group of you-know-whats. And I brought up their master. Hey, wait, look what we have here. What are all these? 
What are all these little equal spaced houses, <laughs> structures along through here? I've never seen anything like that. What is that? Have you guys ever seen anything like this? I don't know what that is. What is that? What is this? Oh no. Oh no. I think we're in the middle of another... We are. Okay. Oh boy, okay. So, we're on the east side of something. We're on the east side of Area 51. But I don't think we're related to Area 51 on this. We're north of Indian Springs. But I would think that that array is it's some kind of array of some kind. An array. An antenna array of some kind. But I'm not getting any info on it. It's not populating anything on it. Anytime I see something like this, buildings that are spaced out equally like that across several miles, chances are they're connected by something. We need to figure out what that is. My Google Earth community is on, but it's not showing anything. You'd think somebody would mark that. They've got an unman unmanned aerial vehicle shadow over that area. It's likely an antenna, guys. Wait. Oh, dude. Yeah, no, it's a military base. Look at all these tanks and everything out here. These are all armored personnel carriers and tanks. That's what these are. That's all military vehicles right there. Those are all tanks. I wonder if we got a street level. I wonder if we can get a street level on this. Of course not. It's a military base. That's military, guys. Okay, yeah, definitely. You can't even go up there. Yep. Wow. Dude, this update has turned into just... Whatever. Let's carry on. It is what it is. I'm not expecting to find this stuff. 666 coordinates. Whatever, man. Let's go on. Get me out of there. That's a scam right there. All right. What else do we have here? Desert Naval Weapons Range. Is that what that is? National Wildlife Refuge? Better not be. It better not be a U.S. naval weapons range, or we've got ourselves a real problem. Something's here. The military thing is right over here, one valley over. So I would think that most likely this is also related to that. I'm guessing. What is this? State prison. The state prison is across the highway there. Oh, God. Yeah, look at this. They've got the targets laid out, the circle targets. So this is going to be a military range of some kind. That is, those circle targets there. That'll be for bombing runs or for target practice from the ground, like if you're in a tank and you're shooting at something. What is this? Oh, wait. A ring of some kind of towers. But it's low resolution imagery. A ring of some kind of towers. In the middle. Well, where there's towers in the middle of the desert, you would think it would be some kind of radio towers of some kind. Oh, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? What do we have in the middle? Nothing. How many sides? One, two, three, four, five, eight side octagon and octagon. Octagonal shape out in the desert on a target range. Well, gee, we're getting down to the last earthquake on here, and I think this has been very, very... Oh, well, you know, hey, what a way to end it, you know. <laughs> I mean, dude, do you guys just want me to sign up? I mean, do I need to... Should I... I I'm 44 years old. I don't think that I... What, I need to be 66 years old to join, I guess I... Oh, my God. We're going to Nellis Air Force Base. <laughs> oh, 
dude. My life, man. I'll tell you what. We're 25 kilometers north of Nellis. Hey, look where we are. We're at the big electrical generating solar stations. Where there's the biggest ever power lines coming out of here. This is the electricity for Vegas, guys. The electrical discharge for Vegas. Or generation for Vegas. And of course, discharge too. It's not going to all go to Vegas. Wow. Well, have you learned anything in today's update? We go from a naval VLF station all the way up in Washington to ESO, Washington. ESO, Washington, ESO, Washington. And then all the way down here at the southeast tip, we end up at Nellis Air Force Base. Right at the power, generating, uh, power generation station. So what would you do if I told you down here in Southern California, this line of quake starts as a power station and goes down through a military base and dead ends into a volcano. And that here we have a volcano and power transmission going right across the middle of the Mojave Desert. And that here, this line of earthquakes starts on the San Andreas and goes down and dead ends into a volcano and a power generation station. What would you do if I told you all three of those are the similar? They're all doing the same thing. And I could prove it. Let's prove it. We're going to start at Kozo Junction and we're going to end at Lava Mount. That line of quakes right here. So let's search it. This line of quakes right here. These are the coordinates. And they're bringing us in on rising domes coming up out of the center of Kozo Field. The geothermal electric power generation plant, Devil's Kitchen. That's what it's called. I'm not joking. See, this is the name from Google, Devil's Kitchen. Something's up, guys. I'm not trying to send a message of anything. Something's up. Something's up. Something's up. It's okay. It's okay to admit it. Atheist, I don't know what to tell you. These people are whack. I'm just dealing with it. I'm dealing with it like you would deal with it. I'm pointing it out, showing everybody how weird it is, and moving on. Devil's Kitchen. That's where we start. We end up down here at the Lava Mountains. At an old road out in the middle of the side of the testing fields for China Lake. China Lake right in here. And this is where all the military does their testing. Over here is Cyril's Valley and they're mining over here to the east. And these are the Lava Mountains right here where the Garlock is going east and west. So we're right next to it. I should zoom in and see if there's anything else here. I really should. With all the other locations being so weird. Like what's here, you know what I mean? I never bothered to really look. Aside from the volcanoes themselves and China Lake, the military base, is there anything else here nearby that we need to know about? I mean, come on. What's that? What the heck is that? It's some kind of... Look at that. It's some kind of tank with some kind of dome and an arm on it and a... I, what is that? What else do we have going on out here? A ranch? Maybe that's a ranch? I don't know. It's like a military test range, right? Paved out here in the middle of nowhere? What do we have here? Boy. Is that a rocket test facility? It is! For crying out loud, man! It's another radar station! It's another high vol... Uh, a high-powered radio wave transmission station. You gotta be kidding me, man. You gotta be kidding me, man. The heck? Cranes, tanks, pipelines. Yeah, this is... They, they got something going on out there. There's something military going on out there. Yep. Hey, look at that shot. Whoa. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> ah, dude. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. Come on, guys. I'm not a Marine. I might as well be one. 
Fighting it online. New Cyber Warrior. You know, everybody asked for a safe space. You know, everybody wanted a safe space in 2016, right? Safe space to be. So what did John, Donald Trump do? Created the Space Force to make space safe. You wanted a safe space? You got safe space. <laughs> All right. Well, at least space is now safe. So going down across the east part of L.A., we have stacks of earthquakes. And they're mimicking the San Jacinto Fault with the biggest stack here happening right next to Salton Sea on the western side of Salton Sea. Let me show you what's on the western side of Salton Sea. Here's Salton Sea, western side of Salton Sea, a diagonal line of faults called the San Jacinto Fault that meets up into the San Andreas, which itself goes back up to the valley, which itself goes over here to China Lake, which goes back up to the super volcanoes, which jumps back over to the drill points, goes back up the San Andreas up to where it's shifting. In other words, power's coming out of the Juan de Fuca, going down the San Andreas, jumping across the valley, going down, jumping back down to Southern California, path of least resistance style, is trying to go around the areas that are blocked. Let's get back to the quakes. So in the middle of all this, this is slow slipping. This red line that I just showed you, the diagonal red line in Southern California. Professionals announced five years ago, six years almost now, that this is slow slipping, that the tremors are happening down here, and that eventually this will break and we'll get a big earthquake on a nearby fault, either the San Andreas or the Elsinore Fault or the San Jacinto, but I would think it would break on the actual one that's slipping. That was six years ago when they announced that, that this is slipping. It's slipped every day since down here, vibrating with small earthquakes. Up to the north, we have to go all the way back up to our 66 tremors on the tremor map. Let's go back and look again. 66. There they are. If only it was a real number. Now you'll notice there's just two earthquakes south of the border, or right at the border. And we go down into Mexico right across the border. Let me show you what's there right across the border in Mexico. Quite literally across the border. The earthquake struck right down here south of Santa Isabel. And we're right next to Cerro Prieto Volcano, which Cerro Prieto has a phoenix inside of it. Riding on the sand, yeah. Stone stack. And geothermal next to it. With, also, they have some solar going on there. Power generation. Major power generation going on here, whether it's solar, geothermal. The geothermal's coming from the volcano right there. And the electric, of course, coming out from that, where the generation is. So let's recap one more time. Fracking operation over in Illinois. Down in Texas, we're right next to the 64,000 Kelvin, 115,000 Fahrenheit degree signature and the flare-offs of the oil wells down from next to where the radar station is down at the south tip of Texas. But the radar station is pulsing over to the mountain range over in Mexico where there's a hot spot being picked up and in between the two, that's where the earthquake is. Pumping operations across Oklahoma. I don't even need to show those to you. Up here into eastern Montana pumping operation, oil. We go into the park, Yellowstone National Park, a few small earthquakes, but we're mainly above the magma chamber for Yellowstone. Up to the northwest, we have a naval VLF station, man. Dude, I stepped into it. And everywhere else down across California, man. And that line of quakes going across the military test range? Oh, boy. That doesn't even take into account the big activity that I've been talking about since the start of the update that we were forecasting for, and now here we are. Now, this gets me into the end of the update, which is just to tell you we are due for extremely large earthquake activity as a result of this deep earthquake activity in the West Pacific. China is due. Philippines going up towards Japan is due. That puts Taiwan in the middle of the mix. Guam is due. So China, oh, and Russia, all of them should be hit. The biggest of the bunch, well, so far it's been 6.4. Let's hope it stays that way. So the biggest of the bunch so far, 6.4. I would expect the other three to four areas to move in the next few days, then to spread out from there. So how big magnitude-wise can we go? We can go up to 7.4. That's as big as we could go, I think. So I think mid-range 7 is the highest we could go. And if we get a mid-range 7 in China, that's going to be devastating. If it strikes out in the middle of the ocean, that's a little different. It strikes out like the Izu Ridge, 100 miles or 200 miles north of Guam, that would be the best. If it strikes anywhere near Taiwan 
or if it strikes anywhere near Okinawa, or if it strikes anywhere near Japan, or in China, or even in Russia in many cases, that's enough to cause just severe damage. We don't want to see that. Would be better if it was in the ocean. Might be a small wave on that, not even really significant. So let's hope for the best. We always hope for the best, but I want you to plan for the worst. So that means you need to be ready. Uh, I've been putting out the videos for the last week. Not even, the last six, five to six days. It's when I started with my be ready, be prepared in the title of my videos. You, you know if you see me make a video and it says deep earthquake event underway. And then the next day I make a video and it says deep earthquake event underway, seismic unrest spreading, have a plan and have a plans in all capital letters. And then the next day it's like big earthquake hits, spread taking place, be prepared, don't be scared. That'll be in the title of the video in all capital letters. So you can see the progression from where the deep earthquakes start. Then you see the next day I'm making a video on larger earthquakes hitting. And then the next day I'm talking about a spread. And then I say, without this next week, we're going to be on major watch. And then we go up into the seven range. It's happened this way dozens of times since I've been streaming. And in the last 10 years, it's even been, you know, we could even say hundreds of times that this has happened already. So the spreads that take place, you can know, you can watch. My viewers who watch daily with me, you're now starting to pick up on your own. You almost don't need me here to tell you. You know to watch it. And the middle points, by the way, if you're new here, let me just tell you something really quick. Everybody stop. Listen. I have published how to forecast an earthquake, step-by-step -step instructions, so you can get it down to a few hundred mile region and try to get it within a magnitude. Step-by-step -step instructions. The video is titled, How to Forecast an Earthquake by Dutch Sense pretty easy to find and search for so there's no secret you can repeat the test do it yourself the fulcrum points find the fulcrum points add up the magnitudes on both sides take the deep earthquakes into account you can start doing forecasting yourself following the red lines the plate boundaries and the craton edges which is a huge discovery on my part in the past few years which really i give credit to god for because i'm just a high school graduate that all this was fed to me by some higher power. And hence the the other side really trying to step in on this one, man. Oh, dude, they want attention so bad. Seeking attention, are they? Well, they'll get all the attention they need in just a little bit. But not from me. From true source of justice and righteousness in the universe. Which is God himself. And if you don't believe, I don't care. No offense. Hey, if you believe in Carl Sagan... You're all good, too. I don't, I don't mind you. Go write a poem for me, will you? In the meantime, will you please have an earthquake plan? Because what good is any of your beliefs, whether you believe or don't, if you don't have an earthquake plan and you don't survive an earthquake you could have known was coming? That's what the arrows are on here for. So you see the six that's up in Alaska? Don't be shocked when we see new increases take place on the west coast of the United States. That's which way the arrows point. It lets you know it's flowing to you. It's like a river coming your way so priorities guys you need to survive the earthquake first then address your beliefs later and understand that i'm going to give you an, an update either way well no matter what you believe i don't care what you believe just like you shouldn't really care what i believe anyway word up much love and you know the world's a crazy place don't be part of that be a bright beacon of hope and positivity for your friends in your life watch the world start to get better around you as you just Flip the switch from being negative Nancy to positive Peter or whatever. We could flip the names. It doesn't matter. You can think of a name for it. You know what I mean. Have a good afternoon and I'll be back if anything else goes down. I'm going to save this as a video and upload it over on YouTube. That should be wild. Oh, they're going to love this. This update's going to go over great over on YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're going to love it. Of course, my viewers will, but everybody else on there, they're going to be scrambling. There's going to be a team of people in camos and a team of people in white skibbies. They're going to be running around trying to stop it. They'll be like, he's showing the VLF array. Oh, my God, shut it down. Earthquakes next to VLF arrays. How about that, guys? Where have I heard that before? <coughs> Australia. <coughs> Exmouth. <coughs> Peace out.